because it makes the church ineffective. Yeah, it does. Amen. And sometimes it's good to, to just to be take a humble position. Sometimes in ministry, uh, some, something will happen, and you know what? And, I, and um, I know that it wasn't my fault, but I'll take the blame for it anyway. Because you know what that does? It, it, it diffuses it. it. Yeah, it diffuses it and say, listen, it's my fault, forgive me. It diffuses it, and I'm willing to do that. Some, and that doesn't happen often. That's not a... But sometimes, uh, maybe you've had the same situation. You know what? I'm sorry. You're right. Uh, even though in your heart you know you did nothing wrong, there's something about, please forgive me, isn't that? And then it just settles the whole thing. Especially with your kids. Kids, yeah. yeah please yep, please forgive Oh, boy. I've had to do that many times. Say, son, daughter, please forgive me. I was wrong in that. I say I was whoa 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 <laughs> wrong, and the next word, would you please for, for, forgive me? You know. Leaves them with no out. Where do they? Well, go? yeah, the ball's in their court now. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? They can accept it, or and if they reject it, then you've done your part. That's all you can do. Secondly, believers must guard against falling from grace, guard against trusting their own works, goodness to, to save them and to make them acceptable to God. We have to be careful. Can a believer fall from grace? Yes. He, can't, he won't lose his salvation. But he can, get so, he can get so out of the will of God and so, out, and so much into sin that he loses his fellowship with God. Boy, can you imagine that? Think about that for a minute. The very God that dwells in you says, I don't want to come near you. Mm. And you're all alone. Wow. That's tough. But at the same time, God reaches down and says, all it takes is a repentance. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. Boom! Fellowship it's right back, just like that. Amen? Amen. And so Paul here is responding in the correct way. In the correct way. Notice verse 4 and 5, and then we'll quit. It says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Here you're going to notice that uh, God proclaims here, Paul is proclaiming here, the works of Jesus Christ. This is a work here that Christ has done for us. This verse is one of the great summaries of the gospel. Verses 4 and 5. That is of the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice four things. We won't get all four in this morning. But notice number one. The message of the gospel is that Christ gave himself for our sins. Christ died, in other words, as our substitute. See, that should have been you and I hanging on that cross. Not Jesus. I, think about this. I, I can't imagine what it was like. You're talking Jesus Christ, God Almighty, leaving heaven, the most perfect place where there's no sin. It's perfect having to come down and be born in a sin-cursed world. You talk about culture shock. My mind cannot... Th Can you imagine what, as, he, as Jesus began to grow, began to learn things, and had to put up with all that sinfulness around him? He left a perfect place to be our substitute. Yeah. The contrast Yeah, yeah, in a feeding trough. Yeah, I know. Imagine, imagine living, uh, leaving his throne in glory and being born in a feeding trough. But you know what? He became our substitute. <coughs> Never forget that. He took the place of the sinner before God. This shows us two things. The word here... For in our text, Hooper means instead of. It means in place of. 
in behalf of our sins. That's what it means. And the phrase gave himself means that he sacrificed himself for us. He gave his life for the sinner's life. Wow. He gave his life for my life. I can't wait to hug him and thank him. You see, Jesus Christ offered himself to God as a sacrifice for our sin too. Never, never, don't, don't misunderstand something. He took our place, but also at the same time, he pleased the Father. There's only one way that God could be pleased with a sacrifice for sin, and that was the sacrifice of his son. The animals would not do it no more. The animal sacrifice was not sufficient. It wasn't complete in the Old Testament. It only, hit it. It, it only covered the sin. Well, it got to the point where it became ritual with the Jewish nation and God despised uh, their attitude towards um, the sac sacrifices as well. And by offering a perfect sacrifice, um, covering the sin, they, yeah. they, just, they just fell into sin and continued to sin, offered sacrifices, and sinning was happening at the temple. And God was just thoroughly disgusted with yeah. the whole culture of what he called it. Right. That's why he said, he told Samuel, it's better to offer the sacrifice of what? Obedience is better than to sacrifice. What's he talking about? You can, you can give up those rams all you want, but it's no good if you're not obeying me. And you know, at that point, you know, we, we can do the same thing. When we get implicit and we get nonchalant and we get backslidden, we're doing the same thing as the Jews did with the sacrifices. We're taking the substitute of Christ and saying, you know, that's all right. I know he did it for me, but you know, it doesn't mean as much to me anymore. So we have to be careful of that. It was a sin offering. It was a substitute for sin. God, when Jesus Christ said it was finished, God said, I now have accepted the complete sacrifice for sin. My son bore the punishment of sin, and I accept that punishment. And notice in our text it says, our sins. Did you catch that? Our sins. Now, Note that our sins are not listed or described. This means that Christ died for all sin. Can you catch that? All sin. Big sins, little sins, known, whatever. Black, white, yellow, pink, I don't care what you call it. But sin is sin, and Christ died for all sin. And, and I praise the Lord for that. Amen? In closing, Revelation 1, 5, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own body. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You said Jesus was born in a, in a manger or a feeding trough. That was appropriate because he had been feeding off the members. Ah. <laughs>